Yes, Babylon is Iraq, modern day Iraq, is very strategic for its for its location and for some of the artifacts and the fact that the gods and I mean by that not the true god, but I mean the gods from space, some of these the lower god systems had already walked the ground and established ancient civilization. And while we're on the subject of Babylon, let's talk about the you know, their their economic system uh, coming into modern times. Six thousand years. The UCC, people don't, a lot of people don't know this play, but the Uniform Commercial Code is pretty much the governing law of the world. That's what, everything is commercial, everything is commerce. But, and I might have mentioned this on our la the last show I did with you, but uh, who owns the code? Who, who does the United States pay 280 some thousand dollars a year in licensing fees just to use the UCC code? The codes are owned by the Vatican. And so, and the Vatican has, you know, made a modern day code of this ancient Babylonian system that was called the Law of the Merchant. The Law of, you know, the Merchant's Law. And so the Law of the Merchant was the ancient Babylonian system. Now we have it as a uniform commercial code. And everything is done with UCC. You go to courts and, you know, it's all about property, it's all about uh, money and ownership and transfer of property and who's got the lien and who's the creditor. And if you notice in these admiralty courts, I was just talking about it this morning with Tom Schultz, um, if you go into admiralty court, the creditor always wins. Now, how can you get justice? The creditor always wins. Uh, it, it, it's a phenomenally... Uh, well, there, again, the Bible warned us about it, you know, the... Uh, you know. The debtors are slave to the lender. Yes, exactly. And who are and, and, and that's that's, a, that's what they've done to us. That's what they've done to us, Bruce. Right here, right now, they have the, with and we warned of about in the Free America magazine. We warned you what NAFTA and GATT was going to do. They took all of our manufacturing out of this country. They yep. they they've been at war with the farmers here for a hundred years. You know where we're, we're going to pay you not to grow that. We don't want you to grow that. And, 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 and oh, you can't grow that hemp. You can't grow that hemp. Uh, oh, we made that illegal in 1939. Yep. Oh, alcohol. Yeah, we made that illegal too. Yeah. Just oh, till, just till we can get just till we could get a gas station on every corner. And, and, and what is is that? Is this my danger? This conversation that we're having right now is is this is the danger, isn't it? This is what they fear. They don't want now. Now with the internet, now I've got I've got the opportunity to get way out there to get uh, to get uh, to reach a lot more people because they would, oh, yeah. when I started yeah. the militia when I started the militia when I helped start the militia me John Trotman from militia of Montana Mark Cornkey Mark from Michigan we helped start uh, we got the, we got the militia movement started and and man it, uh, immediately the ADL came out uh, came down on us armed and dangerous trying to make us into some kind of terrorist organization when we're all American we're the we're the you know we are the American militia Yes, and we are, uh, you know, on the great fraud. Uh, there is, a power is that your over phone? Oh, just ignore it. It's, okay, it's, all right. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. It's a, it's a habit, man. It's a habit. I, I, I start reaching for a phone if I hear it ring. <laughs> yeah. And by the but way, you folks, know, you're bringing up the great fraud. I mean, there's several great frauds. One is that there's any sovereign power over the people. The people are the sovereign. The people are the ones in the first party, first party to the contract of the Constitution, we the people, the party of the first part. Okay, we contract together to uh, form a more perfect union. That's number one. So there should be no militia over the people. The militia is to protect the people, serve the people. Secondly, um, it, it's the great fraud of money, and that is that we are the debtor. No, folks, the American people, you are not the debtor. This national debt belongs to the men who created it and the organizations who created it. Namely, the Federal Reserve, the United States Treasury, the, and the Crown of England, which has created this debt and perpetrated it on the American people. But what they've really done is simply hypothecated the future labor of the American people and funded their wars, their genocide, their worldwide oppression and economic terrorism. They funded on the future labor of the American people. That's what you need to know. So the American people are the creditor, and, and that's what D.K. Durham's trust is so, is so important because she
she has, you know, hard documents that show her credit as reinforcing, and we the people are the beneficiaries, reinforcing this notion that we the people are the creditors of the country. But the bankruptcy in 1933, uh, May 5th or whatever it was when President Roosevelt declared bankruptcy, that was the great fraud and that's the great secret that all of these bar flies, all these members of the BAR, the Bar Association, the British Accreditation Registry, all of these foreign agents that are supposed to register as foreign agents every, uh, whenever, every year, every other year, register as foreign agents to do their activity in America. All of these bar flies uh, have the great secret and walk around whispering and are sworn to never mention this in court and to always cover it up or to show or to try to purport that it's a lie. It's this bankruptcy of the United States. The United States could not declare bankruptcy. It's the Federal Reserve and their monkey business that created the debt. So bankruptcy is a great fraud. It's not the people. We the people are not bankrupt. We the people create things by our labor. We are the faith, full faith and credit behind everything that takes place in this country. So if somebody's stealing off of our, you know, life's work, all of our, our, our life's blood, our energy, our hard labor, if they steal off of that to create war, that's a fraud, that's a crime, that's a crime against the people, that's involuntary servitude, which is a, a violation of the 13th Amendment against slavery. So this whole slave system has got to go, and it's not, it doesn't just have to go because uh, we say so, it has to go because it is just an un inhumane, ungodly, unjust, uh, ridiculous perpetration of delusion upon the people of the planet. And tyranny, and tyranny has always been that. It's, there's never been a time in recorded history, folks, where it was easy to be free. The Bible is filled with tales of governments and outlaws. You know, Jesus was an outlaw. He was a rebel. He was the first one that solved the problem we got today. How do you fight how do you fight evil without becoming evil? Bruce, I want to talk a little bit. You, one of the ways you're doing this, and now one of, we talked about, we've mentioned pharmaceuticals here. We've mentioned, and, and, and made, maybe we didn't mention the fact that the, uh, let's see, the uh, ninth plank on the Communist Manifesto is corporate farms, regional control. Can you, uh, can you say Monsanto? Yeah, we can say that. We're in the West. Okay, they, now they're poisoning your food. They're creating genetically modified corn that rats won't eat, but they're feeding, you're feeding it to your livestock and your kids. And um, the the uh, the farms. If you start growing your own food again, folks, it's 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 one way. But you also talk about water. Now we've got uh, uh, David, who's on my show on the regular. He's on my chat room. Uh, he talks about spinning the water. He said the water coming out of your faucet go, uh, is is rotating the wrong direction. You got to modify it a little bit, and and then you get healthy water. You've got something called hydrogen sticks. Yeah. And, and now I I've tried to point out that the uh, Ignore that phone. Okay. The the whole. Uh, The whole thing about water, it is our fuel. Uh, it's a better fuel than gasoline. You, all you have to do is separate it into the hydrogen. Hydrogen will run your vehicles. It'll run it. Uh, you can run it with uh, with the gasoline or without uh, or, or by itself. It is a fuel. It's the most abundant substance on the planet. You know, you got salt water out there, folks. You can't drink it. You might as well use it for energy. Our ships could be running, sucking the salt water up into them and running on it. They don't have to run on the gasoline and the diesel and the oil that are polluting the planet. Tell me about hydrogen. Tell me about what your what your yeah, little water you is about. You you, you, you you basically said it all, Clay. It's, it's all <laughs> um, hydrogen. Well, I like to say jokingly, it's the number one on the charts forever. It's the it's the first element on the periodic chart. The building blocks of man yes. existence. And in fact, one of my great spiritual teachers, Doctor uh, J J Hertog, who wrote the Keys of Enoch, um, he mentioned in the Keys of Enoch that if man can understand hydrogen, he can understand the universe. And hydrogen is that is, is that mystery of the positive and negative bonded together. So in a way it's like man and woman. It is uh, 
and it is the fuel. We are little stars. I mean, I know a lot of people like to say, you know, from the, the dawning of the age of Aquarius and from all of the, uh, you know, kind of new age uh, little slogans that we are stars. But we are literally uh, like a star. I mean, the sun obviously burns hydrogen. The sun uh, fuses hydrogen into helium. And so when a star, when a star like our sun has fused 50% of its hydrogen into helium, it begins to become less stable. And that's where our sun is right now. But getting back to the human body, the human body needs hydrogen. The human body is like a little star. You consume. You know how light hydrogen is, right, Clay? I mean, it's yes, yes. I mean, uh, we 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 were flying with it until somebody, uh, you know, yeah. blew it up. Well, Hed hydrogen Hedenberg. is light, but your body consumes eight ounces of it every day. Eight ounces of hydrogen. Think how much that is. It's a phenomenal amount of fuel, and that's what fuels your body. The ATP, the little energy uh, units that are created inside the mitochondria and every cell. Those are your little factories. Those factories must produce ATP. As we get older, our ATP production drops off, and that's part of aging. So boosting your ATP production by having easy hydrogen, uh, additional hydrogen support, it's like having a little, uh, it's like adding, you can do it to your car. Now there's little kits you can get for 300 bucks that produce hydrogen from your you know, generator, uh, hydrolyzes water, and you pump the hydrogen in, into the uh, in, into the cylinders to add to the gasoline consumption. And what does that do? Well, for your for your car, that hydrogen adds horsepower and adds gas mileage at the same time. So obviously, hydrogen is a heck of a great fuel. And it's the same with our body. If you can add some fuel to your body every day without eating a bunch of food, then you're going to get a tremendous energy uh, and a clean energy burn. So we have found athletes. Uh, one athlete, he's, he's doing a study on our hydrogen water stick. He's the head of all the athletic departments at Delta State University. And he is, he's a, he runs a 5K every week. It's one of his little uh, disciplines. And he said he did the hydrogen, uh, he did the hydrogen uh, water on a Sunday and ran, and, and uh, on a Monday, and on Monday he ran his 5K and he cut six minutes off of his 5K run without changing his heartbeat. And he always takes his pulse uh, while he while he runs. He he runs by his heart, and uh, he had no change in heart heart rate. But yet he cut six minutes off of his his, his 5K run. This is the kind of thing we're talking about with with hydrogen as a fuel for the body, and we've just begun to explore it. It's just in its infancy, but um, I believe it has a tremendous future. And we find hydrogen in a lot of rich. Uh, around the world when you're talking about the northern now case in Ger Germany or the or the uh, the Lourdes the sacred waters of Lourdes France uh, or in Mexico at La Cote, they all have hydrogen content all of these spas so we believe that what Dr. Hayashi has, has, has worked with is a, is a principle we find in nature and we're trying to harness that in the most natural way possible with a passive unit that can be carried anywhere portable non-electrical, uh, very gentle and passive on the water, but yet it, it adds high, It adds that most valuable element of hydrogen. Now let me say another thing about hydrogen in addition to energy, and this is what everybody's looking for is antioxidant. We want to stop uh, wasting away by the oxygen that is, uh, that, you know, kind of like rusting. It's like you leave your bicycle out in the rain, it's going to rust. And, and our bodies are prey to, we produce oxidative radicals. When we eat food, some of the food breaks down into oxidative radicals that basically chip away at our cells. Uh, but what hydrogen is, and this gets into that male-female positive-negative mystery, hydrogen comes along and it can plug the hole. It can, it can bond to that oxidative radical and make it neutral. That's the beauty of hydrogen. So it is the ultimate antioxidant. It is the most generous uh, of, of elements because it doesn't even need to give its electron. It can share its electron anytime it wants. It'll it'll fill that electron gap. It'll neutralize that oxidative radical. And you've got another harmless pro product that can either be utilized or can flow the way out of the system. What about so what that, what kind of what kind of water do you use? I mean I mean the the person going over there. 
thinking they're going to be healthy taking a drink out of that tap water, especially here in Tucson, you know, is, is simply kidding themselves. I mean, we got, besides the fluoride, we got, we got a lot of other toxins in the uh, Tucson water because yeah. of all the bases yeah. around here. But uh, what about the yeah. fluoride? I mean, you know, I, I, I'm pretty healthy, but I don't, I, my coffee, my coffee is made with uh, fluoride-free, you know, water, reverse osmosis water. Well, that's good because, um, you know, there's difficulty with reverse osmosis. One of the most important thing is you do get rid of the fluoride. And that, that's good because fluoride is one of the most destructive uh, substances known to man. Uh, Adolf Hitler used it in the water supplies to control the populace of uh, Germany. And whenever the population seemed to be getting a little bit... Uh, awake or uppity or you know he would they would just turn up the fluoride doses in the water and we have the same problem here in that we have 50, over 50 percent or more 80 percent of our water systems have fluoride added it it that, lowers that. it lowers iqs too folks you are if feeding your kids fluoride is lowering their iq and it's hard to avoid it anymore because it's in the water and Fluoride toothpaste has been shown to be connected with all sorts of problems, including bone cancer. If fluoride gets into the bones, it creates uh, and, uh, leukemia and bone cancer. And I mean, they're, feed, and they're feeding us aluminum, too. I mean, they're spraying aluminum over us, and the, the snow on top of Mount Shasta is contaminated with aluminum. Yeah. We are definitely being poisoned by the powers that claim to have the governance of the world. And um, this is what needs to be stopped. Well, you work uh, all, you I, work your whole life for Social Security, and and if you if you die at sixty five, they come out ahead. Yeah. So fluoride. Getting back to the fluoride topic, it is one of the the most potent neurotoxins, very destructive of the brain, and it's important to get it out. Now we will be uh, looking at a variety of new technologies to eliminate fluoride because. The reverse osmosis water is uh, difficult for the body. It's, it's a very destructured water. Uh, it's clean. So that's its principal benefit is it's, 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 that it's clean. But the hydrogen stick can interact and add some structure and add hydrogen and make that a more vibrant water. So if you're, if you're using reverse osmosis water, so you're good, you've got clean and safe water, now we have to make that water healthy. And the healthiness of water is determined by many, many factors. Uh, one is, can the water be uh, assimilated into the cells fairly easily? And there are little channels that uh, conduct water into the cells, and they all have to go in single file, H2O, single file, and they're called aquaporins. They were discovered at Duke University. And to, so the water has to go in single file. So you don't want complex structures that are hard to you know, make that happen. But uh, we found the hydrogen stick makes a fairly simple uh, conductance of water, and it's very, very um, hydrated. We've, we've had many athletes and many people say, drinking the water for a day or two, uh, that they, for the first time in their life, they felt hydrated. They didn't even know what hydrated meant, and then they experienced it. So, you know, it is a great little tool for hydrating the body, which is the number one uh, task. Uh, all of cellular metabolism is governed by water. Water is like the master substance. And why not? Because the body's made up of how much? 97% water? Or yeah, 90, 90, 95, 97%, yes. So you are a walking water crystal, basically. Well, part, part, of the, now, now, part, part of the secret behind my Miracle 2 stuff, now I've got some Miracle 2 neutralizer that I've sold for years. People said it made them feel great. and And what it was, I believe, is alkaline water. The water was more, it was, it was charged and, and some, uh, through some kind of process and baking soda added, basically. Uh -huh. It became more alkaline and, and people have been finding out that, that, that baking soda will kill uh, uh, yes, cancer. Sir. Right? Absolutely. Yes, you know, we've got to be careful about becoming acidic because that will feed all sorts of fungus and mold in the body and what have you. It's not good. Um, 
water is not the only solution to solving the problems of the body because the foods you eat can produce more acidic compounds. So people that eat a lot of pizza are going to have a very acidic system. Uh, people that eat a lot of cruciferous vegetables like Brussels sprouts and broccoli and, and, and kale, these are great things if you want to alkalinize the body. So um, that food is extremely important. In the now you've got uh, you've got a food website too. Now, so tell let's touch on that. Let's talk about that right now. And, and yeah. by the way, folks. By the way, folks, you can call me at 505-908-9498 to order any of my books. The links to Bruce's sites are, are on there, so you can you can get your your water. If you don't support the people that are trying to help you, trying to bring you the kind of information, trying to taking the time out of their day to do this show to get you information, you know, then then you're you're simply part of the problem. You're no solution. You're no solution. You know, we we do this. I need your help in order to to keep going to pay the bills. This is all I do. This is all I do. This show. This research. These publications, these movies, these books, you know, and and people don't want you to know that they were. They, they, if you go to the library and try to pull up Free American, they'll tell you it's a porno site. That's just that's, that's pathetic. I'm, I'm really disappointed to hear that they say that. That's well, it's, well it, because I talk about Zionists, because we talk about the uh, Catholic Church, we're going to be censored. They don't want you to know the truth. They don't want you reading the Bible for yourself. Just, just, just trust. Just trust us. Just take. Do just. We'll tell you what it means. We'll tell you what it means. Yeah, I appreciate your quoting the Bible, uh, because you know, like you said, they banned the Bible, and still in some South American countries, the Catholic Church still discourages the people from reading the Bible. But what was the first book? I believe it was the very first book that Congress ever published was indeed the Bible that they gave copies to the um, Re House of Representatives and the Senators, and so everybody had a copy of, of the scriptures that was uh, printed by Congress. So, uh, you know, history's all been twisted around. People don't have a, have a clue. It's the whole notion of separation of church and state. Yes, the whole purpose of America was to get out from, uh, get out from under domination of religious organizations. And what do we end up with? We end up with a corporate government that's a 508 a private ecclesiastical trust under the Vatican. Don't talk to me about the separation of church and state unless you really know what you're saying. You know, it's a, it's a sad, sad delusion of place on the people. But in the last few minutes we have, I better talk about food. As food is, uh, is the, you know, our daily energy. And of course, maybe one day we can live on the light and water and eventually just live on the light. But right now, we need to break down uh, nutrients to, uh, to energize our bodies and to give us the power for everything we do. So food, of course, is the most natural approach, taking what the Creator provided. Uh, we obviously want food as we find it. And some people say that raw food is all you should eat. But I believe that um, the life of the people of our ancestors it looks like, in most cases, a good balance of raw food and then some cooked food is a, sim is a sensible thing. Otherwise, after his, his resurrection, Jesus wouldn't have very well come back and broiled some fish for his disciples on the beach if he didn't figure there's a good reason to cook some food. So um, I, I think that some cooked food is a good thing. and uh, But raw food, folks, is one of the best things anybody out there can do is uh, add a little more raw food and this way it's sensible you don't deprive yourself you don't battle with yourself you don't argue and, and get you know have to go to raw food gurus and get browbeaten because you're eating something cooked no just add a little raw food and that's what we specialize in our our, our living foods began with one living food um, and it was that we had encountered this fermented uh, not really fermented it's a pre digest probiotic all made from organic foods in Australia and 13 bacteria that digest that food and they make it into a nutrient dense mix. So the bacteria prepare your enzymes for you, they prepare your vitamins, your amino acids, essential fatty acids, everything's laid out in a much more ready form so it can go right into the cells. And it was called Prime Directive. 
and with prime directive, we, with Marianne, with my beloved wife, was giving it to her her clients in her uh, practice, her her, her uh, Chinese medical medical practice. The people were doing very well, incredibly well, having their digestion re reformed and realigned and re restored, and and so we decided, well, what if we import this for the United States? And so, and, and, and we looked at it and we said, you know, this food's alive. I mean, the bacteria are still alive and the nutrients are hearty. Well, this is a living food. This is truly a living food. So that's how we came up with living food. And living food is devoted to bringing nutrients in the form that you can use them. So our vitamins are also prepared by bacteria. And the vitamins are in the form. You know, a lot of people don't know you cannot assimilate ascorbic acid. Why? Because that would be like me taking a letter, and let's say, Clay, I want to write you a nice letter. And so I wrote a, write you a beautiful letter, I put an envelope, and I put a stamp on it, and I put Clay, and I give it to the post office. And Clay, well, where did that go? But you see, vitamin C has eight cofactors that have to be bonded to the ascorbic acid. You have to have bioflavonoids. You have to have cofactors. A and these other cofactors that are called chaperones. And the chaperones are critical pieces in the chemical equation so that your body can assimilate that nutrient. So that means you have to have the name, the street, the town, the, uh, the, the, the town and the state, and the zip code. And so our vitamins have the full address, the complete address to deliver the letter, to deliver the nutrient. So uh, we're very proud of this vitamin line that we call Living Food Matrix because it's a real matrix. Such as when you eat a piece of celery, that vitamin, your body, that vitamin has all the cofactors, and your body sees it and says, "Oh, I know how to work with that." When you take ascorbic acid, your cells say, "Well, that's familiar. I might be able to take a little of that. I, I need some other ingredients here to work with it. It looks kind of familiar, but that's not the same thing as assimilation." And that's why our vitamins are 94% uh, assimilate, you know, can assimilate at the rate of 94% compared with about 15% uh, for chelated vitamins. And the regular uh, chemical vitamins, you're lucky, maybe 7% you can assimilate. So, you know, I can't say enough about our vitamins. They won in California courts proving that they were food. That they, you know, because the pharmaceutical industry tried to take over this line of vitamins from our friend, who made, our colleague who made them. He's in he's in England, and he should, he laid it out before the judge. He showed the judge the structure of food and the structure of chemical vitamins, and uh, the structure of his, his vitamins. And the judge said, "So, uh, if I get this right, then this is food. What you have is food, and these other are chemical, and they're not the same thing, and they can't be copyrighted." And and, and, and Eric said, "That's it." And so the judge said, case dismissed. Cool. In the pharmaceutical industry you, law, their case. You know, they, what they have, folks, they don't have the power that they think they have. They don't have the power that they, they, they don't want you to know how really weak, how they're just human just like all of us, you know. What they have is the illusion of power. And if they had the power they think they have, we'd still be under the Syrian Empire, the Roman Empire, or the British Empire. We beat them before, we can beat them again. It's a matter of uniting and staying healthy. You know, you don't have to, to buy into this whole cancer, this Medicare, this, uh, this, this medical, pharmaceutical sorcery. You don't have to buy into that. And I, Bruce, I want to thank you for making that real clear to everyone. Oh, I'm so glad. Yeah, I'm just going to quote Enoch at the end because one of the things that... Uh, Go ahead. In got 15 Enoch, seconds. He says, beware... Enoch says, beware of the false foods of the powers of the earth. How prophetic is that? That was said in 1973. Beware of the false foods of the powers of the earth. All right. Get with, get with living food and get with these communities. Help help Clay uh, get these liberty villages. We all want to live in a healthy, happy, wonderful place. Yeah, just think uh, to have your next door neighbor do your babysitting for you and, and your next door neighbor could be your grandmother. Come on, go, folks. We can do this. We uh, can do it. All right. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you, Clay. A recording has been completed. All right. Good one, bud. Hey, yeah, that was nice.
We yeah. hammered out a few people, didn't we? I, I think so. I think we got some people. The chat rooms were, were pretty uh, jammed. I had my one one guy comes on my show just to try to put me down, just to try to do that. And I just, every time I see him on there, I just delete him. So, you know, then he comes back under another name. Um, Clay. Yeah. Yes. Hello? Yes, go ahead. Hello, who is this? Um, he might not be able to hear you. 